Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding I.O. I'm JD, and today we're going to be talking about converting an AI model to actually use it locally inside of your browser. This actually comes from one of the YouTube comments on our previous video of actually using Transformer.js in the browser. So now we're actually going to look at how can you use the models locally, as well as some tips and tricks of using WASM inside the browser with Next.js specifically. And so with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna look at the transformer.js documentation. So if you go to their essentially homepage on Hugging Face, you can kind of see, you know, we went through installation and uh, some of the usage last time. So what we're gonna today, look at today is actually going through how to convert this to run locally. And right here, you can actually see that it talks about that. It's using the Onyx runtime to run these models in the browser. Uh, and the best part is you can convert it uh, to a pre convert your pre-trained models uh, using Optimum. And so one of the things I noticed is when you click this link, it doesn't actually go to where uh, it's just a dead link. So if you actually click on custom usage, you can come over here. And what it does is it gives you uh, all these settings that we're actually going to look at and the how to convert your model. So today what we're going to do is we're actually going to set all of this up uh, specifically to um, convert a model. You can see that you can define your local paths here in the script. This is the JavaScript that we'll be looking at. The key things is you want to uh, turn remote models off and then there's also a setting to allow local models. We'll go through those configurations when we get to the JavaScript. What we're gonna focus on now though is actually converting the script. So what you can do is you can actually run Python uh, and if you'll notice, it has a model name or a path. So you can actually point it to a model on your local. The model name, they actually have a list of supported models that you can uh, actually download. And then this is the configuration of, of where, the follow, where the files will actually be saved to. So it's going to create a models folder and then basically a set of configuration plus your Onyx uh, file. All of this is going to get actually loaded into the browser. So the first thing we want to do is we want to look at the, the Python script that you can actually get. And so to do that, you can go ahead and click this link. It'll take you over to their GitHub page. All right, so now that we're over here in GitHub and we can actually see this script, we'll notice that in, if inside the transformers.js, it has a scripts folder and a convert file. Inside these scripts, these are all useful tools that can actually give you different information and help you download the, uh, the AI model and then convert it specifically to Onyx. So when I was looking at the convert file, you know, there's a lot of different things around the parameters and how this is actually building that you can dig into, but they also have a lot of useful command lines uh, interfaces. So being able to understand like, what are these parameters that you can actually define is important. One of the ones that is the most important is the model ID. This is actually going out and looking at either uh, the tasks that you are that you may want to use, or the um, the models specifically that they already have supported through Hugging Face, because what happens is when you load this model, it's actually making an API call to the through the browser to Hugging Face to pull this model back so that you can load it locally. So if we want to actually take that model and put it in on our local machine or uh, local or our web server we need to know what the model ID is. The other tool that they, they that I found incredibly useful is uh, this supported models Python. It doesn't actually show you how to use it, but we're gonna go through that today. And what's interesting about this is it gives you a list of, of all these different types of models, but it also discusses the tasks. So for instance, this is a fill mask task. And if we go back to our transformers, uh, JS documentation and you scroll down to these tasks, you can actually see what the ID is. These IDs are what you're using in your script specifically, 
So it's showing you the task that is associated with the model. So right here we have the Albert base V2. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually take these scripts and try and run them locally and see what we can get out of it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up my terminal, which I have a clean terminal here, and a list of commands, which I put together. The first thing is just a clone through GitHub. I've actually already done this, so I'm in my uh, folder already. And I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, environment. So I'm going to use Conda to do that. And the reason I do this is just to make sure that all of my pip installs for the requirements are contained in one place. So we're going to go ahead and do that really quickly. And if it already exists, we can just say yes. We're going to proceed anyways. Now we can go ahead and activate our transformer. You can see that right here it's changed between the two. So before it was saying base, now it's saying transform. So now we've activated. For me, I'm going to go ahead and pip install the requirements here uh, with a pip3. Through your system it could be pip. Um, so the first thing I want to see is where am I? I know I need to actually go into the scripts, so I'm going to do cd scripts, then do my pip install, which didn't copy and paste, and we'll go from there. I'm going to pause while this actually runs through everything. All right, now that I have everything installed, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look at the uh, supported module models that you can actually run. So I'm going to take this one, this script, go back. I need to CD out of scripts just so that I can actually run it. So what it's saying is the module, the scripts folder, and then the Python file, which is supported uh, modules. What's cool about this, it's now giving me all the scripts to actually run whichever supported model that I, I want to use. And it has a ton of them. So if you know what you want to look for and you want to download a specific model, you can actually look through and find these. They are actually updating these. I even saw that Tiny Llama was one of the newer ones that just came out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take one down towards the bottom. We know we're going to have a Yolo's Tiny. And then we are going to try and run it locally. Again, I'm going to let this run uh, and go ahead and pause for a time. All right, so now this is run. Uh, we're just going to look at a couple of things. So it's exporting to Onyx. You had to have PyTorch, which was installed on the requirements. It's going out and validating the model. And then it's exporting right here to this models folder uh, and then doing all the layers. So if we actually come back into Transformers.js and we have our folder open, if you look, you now have this models folder. You can see it's grayed out because it's not uh, checked into Git. And inside there, we have this uh, YOLO's tiny, right? And so this is important because what it's doing is it's installing it locally. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this and implement it into Next.js. So I already have this file opened, but in their examples, they have a Next.js client. And what you can do is you can go in and create uh, a... Fuck. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the example that they already have in Transformers.js and see how we can actually load this in. They have one specifically for Next.js and the Next Client. We've looked at this before, but we're gonna take a look uh, again now. And so if you go into the examples and your Next Client and you go ahead and go down to this workers.js, this is actually where we're gonna be kind of looking at stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and get this, uh, this client up and running. So if we do npm run dev, Make sure you do an install first, um, but npm run dev, and then we're actually going to uh, pull out this uh, URL.
Real quick, I just wanted to give a shout out to the people that are commenting on the videos. Again, we are paying attention, trying to answer the questions as quickly as we can. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. If this is a topic that you're interested in, please leave us some uh, information in the comments. We also have a course on this specifically, uh, which I'll leave a link in the description. And with that, let's get back to it. All right, so now that we've opened the URL that we've launched, we're gonna go ahead and look at our network tab. And this is important because what we wanna see is the requests that are actually going out. And so if we get our network tab up and running, when we do a command R or reload our screen, we don't see anything getting imported. And that's fine because we're looking at our XHR. When we start typing in something, we can see that we're getting 404s and that we're getting uh, this Onyx model that it's trying to go out and grab. And it's loading. So what we're going to do here is we want to actually see how we can actually load this locally and get our WASM, which is over here in this tab, up and running. All right, so we know we are going to be using this distributed fine tune. So if we go back to our uh, list and we try and find our model, we can see in our supported list that this is the actual model that our example is using. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this. Actually, I'm going to use my copy just so I don't have to. Mine is using Python 3. So I'm going to copy this, but you can get it directly from your supported models of when you were uh, looking earlier, right? This is the list. All I did was pull uh, pull up find, grab that model, it showed me this is the script or the command that I need to run. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Again, I'm going to pause. All right, now that that one's completed, we can take a look, make sure that it is over here, and we have it as well, right? So we have our Onyx file inside our module, models, and we're going to now include this into our uh, Next.js application. All we really need to do is copy the models folder of the models that we have and copy them into the public folder of the Next.js app. So we can you can either use a command line or you can just drag and drop. I used the command line, but if you look, when you copy it, right? So whether you're dragging it or copying it through command line, you now have this folder inside your uh, Next.js public. This will allow you to actually be able to load this model into the browser. So next, we are going to go to back to our worker JS, which is right here. So it's inside source and app and the worker JS. This is actually how we're going to be loading this information in. What this is doing is right now, this is saying allow local models false, which is why it was actually going out to Hugging Face in the first place. We are gonna change this to true. So we do wanna allow local models. And then we're gonna look at our examples of what other configurations are there. So we can, the other thing I wanna do is I want to allow remote models as false. This can technically be a backup, uh, but just for the sake of argument so that we can test, we're gonna make sure that we're only looking at uh, local models. So right now we have a allow local models true and allow remote models false. The other things that you can look at are where do I actually look for these models? Right now it's gonna be defaulting to the uh, the model's path, this is fine, this works for us. However, if you wanted to change this, you would change it with this local model path. The other thing is you can actually tell it where the WASM uh, files are. Again, it's fine where they are currently, so we're just gonna leave it as is. Um, but you do have that, uh, that ability. 
The other thing is this model name is probably different for you. So you want to make sure that it is just the folder name that we downloaded. So we looked, this name matches this folder. Sometimes I think uh, it has like Xenova in front of it, something like that. So we just need to get rid of this. Just make sure that it's the, the file path of our default, which is models, and our folder, which is this folder, this folder, and our task, which is the task classification. All right, so make sure you save that. All right, so we're now back in our browser. We're gonna go ahead and do a refresh. Uh, and what we're going to look at is seeing if we can pull the, the model itself in. So we start and it automatically is pulling this in and it's pulling it in a lot faster. So when you see this, you can actually see that when it's going and looking for the JSON model or the JSON tokenizer, it's actually pulling it from our local host. You can see that right here. If you can make it a little bigger. Whereas before, this was actually going out to Hugging Face and uh, pulling in this information back. So now we have this and it's running everything locally. Another thing that can be a little weird is when you refresh, it's happening so quickly. That can be a little bit of a false negative because it does need to actually load this into the, the, the Chrome browser. It's doing that by a couple of different things. So this time you saw that it's not actually fetching anything this time. And the reason for that is already cached, right? So if you look at WASM, you can see that it's still pulling this information from uh, remotely again. We could actually pull this file in locally through the other parameters that we saw. But if we want to to load again, what we can do is go to this application, click on storage, go ahead and clear your site. And then when we go back to the network, we'll actually see it load again. So let's go and click on fetch here. We'll refresh and you can see it's actually pulling everything in locally. So there you have it. This is how we can actually pull in the uh, information locally or pull in the model locally and actually have it running just through some simple configurations. This is really important for a couple of different reasons. Like one, it's cool on the web. You know, there is the downside of it loading in the beginning. However, what's really interesting about this is that uh, you can load this in a Chrome extension, which is what our course is on, or you can load it through React Native, for instance, or you could load it through Electron. So as a local uh, application is lo like loading itself, you could actually be loading that AI model as well, and then using that AI model offline. Um, I really think this is gonna be extremely big. And so again, this is important in the sense that like, you're using AI models in the local instance. We gave you some tips and tricks specifically around uh, how to work in the browser. So, so again, all we had to do were some simple configurations, right? We had to actually load it in the public models and then the uh, allow local models to true, allow remote models to false. We make sure that our model is following to our default path and specifying which model and which task we're actually trying to operate. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode. So what we learned today is specifically actually using the converting scripts that Transformer.js gives you access to, some of the little tips and tricks of where to find models and things like that with the supported models that they have. And then we also did some debugging and uh, looking at like WASM in the browser, so how to look at our networks tab, clear our data, and actually make sure that we're loading in those models locally. So with that, happy nerding. See you again soon.